Maybe I'm crazy, but we're doing this show on the road. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. I'm Joy Taylor. Thanks for joining me for the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. I am obviously not in LA. All of our studio shows are off for the week at least, dealing with what we are all experiencing around the world with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope you're staying safe, staying home as much as possible, as much as you can, and um, doing social distancing and everything that they're recommending. Hopefully we can beat this sooner than later. But in the meantime, I wanted to just give everyone a little break from the news and the craziness. We had a pretty substantial free agency period as expected. So we're going to do a, a shorter version of our podcast on the road. Donnie and Heller are going to join me via Skype and we'll get into some of the bigger moves um, around the NFL. And of course, my Dolphins are making lots of moves, which I'm very excited about. But obviously, the biggest news of the day is that Tom Brady will not be returning to the New England Patriots. I kind of felt like this was coming. There was so much smoke surrounding the situation, so many leaked stories and subtle little shots and the call didn't go well. And Tom Brady posts this mysterious picture video around the Super Bowl, which turns out to be uh, commercial, but you know, still kind of shook everybody up. There's just kind of a lot going on, and it felt like they would have to do something so dramatic to get him to stay. The 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 measurements are going to be different for Tom Brady than it is for Bill Belichick. For example, I don't think Tom Brady has to win another championship in order for him to win this breakup. Belichick, I think, does have to win another championship. If Tom Brady goes somewhere, makes the playoffs, wins a playoff game, puts up big numbers, has some success in his last two years in the league, I think he's going to be looked on more favorably than if in the next, I don't know, eight to ten years that Bill Belichick coaches, he doesn't make it to or wins another Super Bowl. Now, who wins the divorce in this situation really doesn't matter. They had a 20-year run, won six championships, Brady's the greatest of all time of quarterbacks. I think Bill Belichick is the greatest football coach of all time, or at least in the professional level. And I don't think that's going to change how we look back on it. But this is a new chapter in their saga, in their careers, separating why they separated, what really went down that pushed Brady over the edge. I'm sure we're all going to find out. You know, he has his production company now and you know one day we're going to get the full story but for right now we know they're going their separate ways and who's going to win that situation now if you are a patriots fan calm down like do not overreact do not be ungrateful you're the greatest run probably in the history of sports it's never going to happen again so brady gave you everything he had he took discounts he put his body on the line he dedicated himself more than really any other athlete probably has ever besides kobe bryant so there's nothing to do but be grateful for the time that you had with Tom Brady. And not that you should want him to have success somewhere else, but, you know, just just don't go crazy. Now, that said, the rest of the league is freaking out. Obviously, this is a great situation for the AFC East. There can finally be some movements and competition in that division for the first time in 20 years, basically. I think the Bills are in the best position moving forward. Dolphins made a lot of moves, as I said, but I think we're all... Leaning towards the Bills in this current situation, especially with the addition of Stephon Diggs. I think that he'll end up winning this breakup because he is going to bring a level of championship play, dedication, 20 years of wisdom, and he's still able to play. He's not his he's not his best, as we know. He's not what he was 10 years ago, but he can still get it out there, and he's going to bring an attitude from New England that we really haven't been able to see. The Spurs. They kind of spread out, you know, like there's, 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 been, there's been branches, I will say, of the Spurs family, which always gets compared to the Patriots, that we've seen success with, obviously. But it's always, it's never really been those guys. Like Kawhi leaving and going to the Raptors and winning a championship, that's something. And this is kind of what I feel like with Tom Brady. We've had coaches leave, we've always had players leave, but not someone who really came up in the system the way that Tom Brady is and was the ultimate representation of the system. So I can't wait to see what happens. Again, I hope New England fans are aware of the greatness that they had. For the most part, what I'm hearing is that they are, but man. With it. With it. With it. it. We about to turn up in this bitch. 
All right, Heller's back with us. Um, hey. the, world, the world is crazy right now. Heller hasn't been with us for, for like two months now, right? Uh, it's been a, let's say four weeks, I think, maybe okay. five weeks. Yeah, so, that's good that it's felt long. No, that's good that it's felt long without me. That means you missed me. It has. Heller also produces on Speak for Yourself, so he has double duty every day, and he has been having to do more with Speak for Yourself recently, which we're very happy about, but yep. also it's means so he hasn't been on with us, so Miss not, you not the, the best situation to come back to, but we're happy to have you back. Hey, so the squad's reuniting when, when the world needs us most, so exactly. let's, let's rock. All right, That's so rock. what are we right. on? What did I quit it? Okay, things have officially changed in New England. Tuesday morning, Tom Brady let the world know that he and the Patriots are parting ways. Although my football journey will take place el elsewhere, the GOAT grammed, I appreciate everything that we have achieved and am grateful for our incredible capital T-E-A-M team achievements. And just like that, Joy, the Patriots way is no more. Neither Tom Brady nor Bill Belichick will ever, ever, ever win another championship. Huzzah, win it or quit it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to quit it. I think that's, that's too much greatness to bet against. That said, I, as much as I love this move and I love that he's no longer in New England and right. I, I'm, it, it's, it's the best case scenario for all sports fans, except for New England's fans, that he's leaving... I think Belichick is in the better position long term. Now, look, Belichick is, uh, he's no spring chicken here, okay? So it's not like he's going to be coaching for the next 20 years. He doesn't yeah. have a, yep. he doesn't have an endless window to, to win a championship either. Like, how old is he? 70? 70 something. Let's find out. He's 70 old. He's 70 old. He might be 60 old, actually, though. He's 67. Okay, 67. He's younger than I thought he was. So yeah, let's say he coaches to conservatively, realistically, 75, right? I think coaching past 75 is, is feels a little bit extreme. Sounds nuts, Loki. Yeah. <laughs> although, although we got presidents presidenting past 75, so. Unfortunately, and, 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 yes, we and, and, do. And, sorry to make, sorry to go there. Sorry to be political, yes. Um, yeah. Well, Hard yeah. Enough. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a pretty good point. I would say being a president is slightly more stressful being than being the head coach of the New England Patriots. Similar amount of gray hair is accrued, though, I feel like, at both professions. So, okay, so fine. But I'm going to conservatively say 75, okay? So that's yeah. eight more years of coaching, uh, where, as opposed to Tom Brady's two more years of playing. I, I'm going to lean towards Belichick in the longevity argument. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the fact that the Patriots still have a pretty great system. Now, the question is, does that system work without the great Tom Brady? That I don't know, because you're not replacing Tom Brady. You're going to bring in somebody who has a completely different style, really probably not even a comparable work ethic, is going to be younger, so it's going to have a different mentality than Tom Brady has. So that's going to be the really big question is could Tom Brady can go somewhere else, have immediate success as far as numbers go. Is he going to win a championship? I don't know. I think as long as he makes the playoffs, can win a playoff game and can put up decent numbers, he's going to be sent off in a golden chariot regardless. Belichick, yeah. however, if, I think the pressure is more on Belichick than it is on Brady. If Belichick, right. can, if Belichick doesn't win another championship without Brady – it's not going to look as bad as Brady going somewhere, putting up great numbers, and retiring. Without even a contingency plan to move on from Brady either. Yeah. So it'd be one thing if he if the next guy was ready to go, but I don't think anyone ha has any idea who that next guy is. Were you surprised, Joy, as a, a former person that had no choice but to support Ryan Tannehill to see the, the Titans say no thank you to Tom Brady and put such an investment in your boy Ryan? No, I was more surprised that they chose to pay Ryan and not pay Derrick Henry when the Great. entire um, world knows the Great. only Great. reason they had success offensively this year was Derrick Henry. That feels outrageous. And being that we already know what Ryan Tannehill is because we saw him with the Dolphins and we saw him during this playoff run. And while he did turn their season around because he's just – better than Mariota, they got there because yeah. of Derrick Henry. So that to me is more surprising than the fact that they didn't want to bail on the much younger and currently in place quarterback of Ryan Tannehill over Tom Brady. Because look, we're not talking about Tom Brady 
playing at his highest capacity either. He can still no, play and he's still he's Tom not, Brady. He's really not. But he's not uh, coming in and changing your franchise when your franchise is built around one super incredibly talented running back. He's going to need a little bit more than that, as will Ryan Tannehill, and that's why I don't believe in the Titans next year. Um, all right, what's next? The NFL has moved strongly to decriminalize marijuana usage amongst its players. In the new CBA, players will not be suspended for positive tests. The test will only be during two weeks of training camp, and the threshold for a positive test is four times higher. All good things. MLB made similar adjustments earlier in, in, in its offseason, uh, which is now longer, and the NBA has suspended all drug testing during the, the current hiatus. Joy, all professional leagues should eliminate punishments for marijuana consumption, with it or quit it. Yeah, with it, 100%. So mm. in mm. kind of crazy, dramatic mm. times, changes are made. Great times. Which can end up being positive, and I think... Or, or revolutionary for that matter. I also think yep. there's going to be some changes made to the schedule for the NBA that will end up being more positive. But in general, just to stick to drug testing, yeah, marijuana is legal in a lot of places in this country. Obviously, you and I both yep. live in Los Angeles where you can walk into a store and just buy marijuana or edibles or whatever or even, CBD oils or bath bombs or whatever kind of products, doggy biscuits that you, can you even, want. You can even irrationally stockpile for the end of the world. You also, can. Do, you can. Like, and you like, probably it's should like, if it's something. Like here, you could. <laughs> if it's something that you partake in regularly, you probably should. Um, if one wanted to, they could. Yeah, totally. Anyway, go on. Sorry. Yeah. So the point is, like, that's that's our way of life. Like, there's, there's marijuana bars in L.A. where you can go and purchase – uh, weed-related items and food. Rent a bong if you need to. And do whatever you need to do right there in the weed bar. So, obviously, California, we're a little more extreme than everywhere else, but it, this is coming for the entire country, as we knew it would, eventually. And we're moving towards uh, not, not just the decriminalization of it on the federal level, but also, you know, getting people out of jail who are there for decades and decades for crimes involving marijuana, which is now legal and look you can feel however you want to feel about uh, drugs but keep <laughs> that same energy for alcohol like if you think that players should be tested for something that is legal in their state yep. then that just like you, you can't make it make sense so obviously this is people are going to be stuck in their house so they're realizing like there's most a lot of people a lot i don't know if i'm gonna, I'm gonna be the person <laughs> the person who like announces this but like a lot of athletes use marijuana and <gasps> CBD and weed do. related. Now, yes, they do. Um, athletes, you say? Yes, a lot. A lot, a lot. Many. As they should, because it's a healthy alternative to, say, opioids or any other kind of uh, health deteriorating yeah. or addictive substances to relieve stress and pain. Forming all those. All all those things. Right. So I do think that this is a, going to be a lasting decision as it should be, but I'm glad they, especially the NBA suspended it for, for this current hiatus of the league. And it's a great move for the NFL as far as the CBA goes. And, and, and the biggest thing for me is other than the fact that it's legal in so many places, so it doesn't make sense. Like you don't ban alcohol. Right. The bigger thing is I can't handle the conversation about marijuana tests and suspensions when you are handing guys piles and piles of addictive pills that deteriorate your insides and are completely unhealthy for you right. and that's okay but it's not okay for you to say use some of what you know the products that Gronk has been pumping around the right. CBD oils yep. and rubs and and all those things yep. which I've used and are very effective for pain relief and everybody you know has a different thing that they do but it's it's a great move I think it'll be lasting and it's a uh, I don't want to say a silver lining, but it's a change that was forced upon leagues that I think will end up right. being a long-term better decision. Yeah, the NBA saying that they're not going to test during this period is just an admission of what the real priorities are. And in terms of, you know, uh, stomping things out and making sure things aren't happening, people smoking weed is should be pretty low. Very, very low. As oh, So low, right. in fact, that they're not testing for it, which is great. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Hey, Donnie. What's up? What up? How's it going? 
Uh, probably the same as you. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping them spirits high. That, that, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, what, what else can we do? But at least we yeah. have a lot of sports news this week. Exactly. So. Yeah. Thank God for free agency. Yeah, that was kind of the NFL to keep that going. Um, exactly. All right. So let's do high key Loki. Let's do it. High key trading DeAndre Hopkins is crazy. Low key, the Vikings got more for Stephon Diggs. Well, as our our friend Nick Wright tweeted, <laughs> we can all agree that there's one blessing, and that's that Bill O'Brien is not our GM, owner, coach, czar yeah. person. It's <laughs> it's so bizarre the whole situation in Houston, and it just makes me sad for Deshaun Watson. But yeah, yeah so basically, the Texans got David Johnson. The running back. They got a 2020 second round pick and a 2021 for fourth round pick. Right. So he would have been in line to get a one year deal in the $2 million range, David Johnson, if he hit the open market. Instead, he his $10.2 million base salary is already guaranteed for 2020 and the $2.1 million of his base salary in 2021 guarantees in five days. And then you oh, throw man. in another 960000 in pregame roster bonuses. So the Texans are on the hook for more than $13 million for Johnson over the next 12 months. Ooh, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So I don't, it doesn't seem like a good deal. Now they have Will Fuller and Kenny Sills, who are, who are decent, but I don't think anybody really feels they're number one wide receivers. They're certainly not DeAndre Hopkins. Right, they're deep threats. Right, and Fuller has major injury issues he's played about 36 complete games out of 64 possible games over his four seasons so he's very injury prone as well so i I don't know who as if deshaun watson didn't have to do everything for the texans already they're like now you gotta level up so i feel bad for him because look we all love deshaun watson and it just feels like he's never gonna be able to reach his potential in houston it's hard too because that offensive line gave them so much trouble this year and i don't know if adding a running back to that situation solves anything it's only going to make it harder for deshaun no and uh, like listen i think we all like david johnson but i mean he's 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 not deandre hopkins it's not an ideal situation for him either no and he's gonna be paid so much there's gonna be so much pressure on him Now, Stephon Diggs, I kind of felt like the whole Minnesota, like, oh, he's not going anywhere thing felt a little bit stretched out. Like, he's clearly not happy there for whatever reason. And I always kind of felt like he was leaving. There was just too much smoke there. Well, he is, and he's going to Buffalo, which is great for Josh Allen in Buffalo. Yeah, man, I'm sure he's excited. They're sending four picks to Minnesota, a first, fifth, and sixth in 2020, which is basically like whatever, package deals. And a fourth in 2021, and they also get a 2020 seventh rounder back from the Vikings. Whatever that means. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like they got a bunch of picks and whatever. Like they basically cleared some space and got someone out of there that wasn't happy being there. He's in the second year of a five year, $72 million contract. He's one of the best receivers in the league, and he's going to do really well in Buffalo. The, uh, those two actually being traded. The surprising one was obviously Hopkins. I think we all kind of felt like Diggs was going to move. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, low-key the Vikings got a lot more picks, and the the Texans got uh, less picks and a whole lot more money to pay for one running back. So It's all about what you do with those picks. But I'm, I'm super excited for Kyler Murray, I think, to have that season coming up with uh, DeAndre and Larry uh, in his back pocket. That's going to be pretty awesome for him. Young yeah, kid. the Cardinals got a lot better, and that's yeah. exciting for Kyler Murray. You want to give a young quarterback as many pieces as you can. That's why I like what the Browns did, too. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Houston's just they're, – they're, I, I, I don't know. They're cursed. <laughs> like, it's, it's the curse <laughs> of Bill O'Brien. It's never going to end. Uh, all right, what's next? High key is comeback season for Cam Newton. Low key, Teddy B is going to the Panthers. Ooh. So I'm so torn on this because so the team posted on its social media that they are allowing Cam Newton to look like search for a trade. He did not appreciate that. He responded in <laughs> how does he get that weird writing, by the way? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think you have to hold the keyboard down. You know, hold one of the icons down, and then a whole bunch of weird stuff pops up. It's, That's my guess. It That's seems not like a lot all. of work. I'm mean, understanding yeah. it's his swag, but it's it seems like a lot of work. Anyway, he said, yeah. "Stop with the wordplay." Coincidentally, 
<laughs> He's the king of that. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I never asked for it. There's no dodging this one. I love the Panthers to death and will always love you guys. Please do not try and play me or manipulate the narrative and act like I wanted this. You forced me into this. Oh, man. Love. Yeah, so Greg Olson's not there. Cam Newton's likely not going to be there. And they're very interested in Teddy Bridgewater. Now, I also saw that the Bears were interested in Teddy Bridgewater, which I love as well. But I do think in Teddy Bridgewater, the best case scenario for him would be to go to the Panthers. Now, this kind of flies in the face of the idea that the Panthers were tanking to try and get Trevor Lawrence. I don't really think NFL teams tank like that. Like, yeah, I think it just kind of yeah. happens that way, and then you end up getting the number one overall pick. Like, I don't think the Bengals were going into the season, like, yeah, tanking for Joe Burrow. That's how you, like, gravely injure yourself in this game. You can't do that in Yeah, football. and sets your organization back for a very long time. So the point is, I, I love Teddy B there. I think it's a great situation for him, and I am really interested to see where Cam Newton lands because a lot of people don't think that there's a big market for Cam Newton. I think he has a lot of football left. By a yes. lot, I don't mean 20 years. I mean, I think he can still play at a high level for the next five years. He's been very injured. He's had to run for his life. He takes big hits. If he can adjust the way he plays a little bit, not get hit so much, I think he could do a lot for someone like, say, the Bears. I think Cam Newton to the Bears makes a lot of sense. I think Cam Newton to the Redskins makes a lot of sense. If he can go somewhere where and, and look like he has a Redskins tie there now, so I mean, I don't know if that's yeah, the move that's Ron Rivera true. wants to make, but. I do. I'm a, I'm a big Cam fan, as I've always said. I think he's a superstar, and when he's playing at a high level, the league is better because he, yeah. he just has that kind of gravitas and energy. Star but power. He does. He does have star power. So I'm super interested um, to see where he ends up going. All right, what's next? Hi, Key. The Cowboys are being so stingy with Dak. Low-key, I can't wait for this to blow up in their face. Uh, I can't <laughs> believe they did this to Dak. I can't believe it. They paid everyone but Dak. So they placed the exclusive franchise on Dak Prescott's. So they still have time. They still have till July 15th to work out a long-term contract. So it's not the end of the road. Otherwise, he's going to have to play into this tag. And we're going to be talking about this for another year. Ugh. Right now, it's expected to be worth between 30 and $33 million, which will chew into the $79 million in salary cap space that they had entering free agency, which some of that is gone because of Amari Cooper. Right. But I, I hate this move for Dallas. I've been very consistent about I think that Dak should be paid. I don't understand you not putting any confidence in your franchise quarterback. Dak is not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Tom Brady. He's not Aaron Rodgers. We know that. You don't need that to be successful in this league. Who your right. alternative is other than Dak? I don't think there's that many quarterbacks out there that are available that are that much more talented than Dak. That right. don't already know the system. That don't already understand how things work in Dallas. That don't already feel comfortable there and know Jerry Jones and have a relationship. They did right, pay him handle that Dallas pressure. Right. And they did pay Amari Cooper. They gave him a five year, hundred million dollar deal. He's the second highest paid receiver in the league behind Julio Jones. And, you know, obviously he's a number one receiver, but there's been some questions about, you know, his dedication to the Cowboys and like what all that really means. I think Amari Cooper needs Dak. I mean, not necessarily needs Dak, but I think Dak and Amari Cooper play well together. I think yeah, exactly. that Dak definitely needs Amari Cooper, but why you would pay Amari Cooper and not Dak? Like, everyone got paid before Dak. He's your quarterback. Yeah. I just feel like you're hustling backwards. And you're going to have to pay him more again next year. Like, it's not like this is going away. He, We know how good he is. You're bringing yeah. back a lot of the same pieces. So he's just going to be just good enough that you're not going to be in a situation to get a better quarterback anyway. So what's your plan? This is just a procrastination move. It's like a boring non-conclusion that Dak deserved better than. Right, and they could still get a deal done, but I don't I have any confidence that they will at this point. And now going into next year, what's your plan? Like everyone keeps referring to the Kirk Cousins situation. Yeah. And like that's really cute, but did that work out for Washington? Because I feel like Washington's a disaster and they just fired their coach and just had to hire a new coach. And right now they got Dwayne Haskins um, and they could end up taking another quarterback. So I don't think that, that worked out well for Washington. It worked out great for Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins just got another extension. He needs to make uh, money yeah. hand over foot. <laughs> like he's <laughs> out here 
thriving. Okay. Oh man, so, he's got to start a quarterback class after he retires. Like teach these young kids coming up how to get that money like that. You Kirk Cousins is the master. So much money being a just above <laughs> average quarterback. And yeah. he is the master of that. So I don't think that worked out well for Washington as much as it worked out perfectly for Kirk Cousins. So I hope it doesn't happen with Zach. I'm super disappointed they didn't pay him, but I'm just waiting for this. I am waiting for the answer for all of this. And if they end up letting Dak go eventually, like next year. Yeah. I mean, what is the plan? That's always been my question. All right, what's next? High key. Drew Brees is finishing his career in New Orleans. Low key, he is a top five all-time quarterback he is he is you know i love drew Brees, so i figured that he would end up finishing i mean we knew he was gonna end up finishing his career in new orleans there was somewhat a little bit of a conversation if they were gonna start transitioning into Taysom hill yeah because i think we all know that they can't keep Teddy bridgewater but they signed him to a two-year deal around 50 million he took a little bit less so that they could have some more space which makes perfect sense for drew Brees. it's not like he hasn't made his money throughout his career he wants exactly. to try and win another championship. They are fully set up to win a championship. I thought that they would be there uh, in the NFC Championship game this year. Obviously, we know mm-hmm. how their season ended. It was super disappointing, but they still have a lot of huge pieces. Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Jared Cook, great defense. And now oh, they've man. got Drew Brees coming back, who I thought played at a really high level. And, I, you know, he obviously had those five games off, so he looked better. But I think he's going to come in prepared for this year. Obviously, we're not – accounting for any possible injuries with any of these scenarios that we talk about. But as far as like him being all time, he's just the greatest all around dude representation of his uh, franchise. And if you just get on the records, the records that he has, it's just, yeah. it's just it's insane. It's Let mind-blowing. me just read them real quick. These are just some, just some. Uh, most home. career regular season passing touchdowns, most career passing yards, most career pass completions, most comp- pass completions in the season, highest career completion percentage, highest single season completion percentage, highest single game completion percentage, most touchdown passes in the game, and most consecutive games with a touchdown pass. Last record was tied. It's just unbelievable. And that's like just some of them. Oh, so we have the conversation of comparing careers, and I've said this for a while, like the comparison is not Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. It's Drew Brees and Tom Brady. And that's just, it's just facts. Because Aaron Rodgers is not going to be able to put up those those numbers, like just based off of the offense that they run. Yeah. He's just, he's just unbelievable. And I'm glad that he's going to end up finishing his career there. It didn't have to be the same way as Tom Brady. Like it makes sense for him to finish it there. He still has yeah. enough in him to finish it there. And they're still set up for a championship. And they, you know, give him hugs and stuff, whereas, you know, <laughs> the Patriots don't. He's setting himself to go out John Elway style. If he were to win two straight championships, where would that put him in your – would he go from your top five to top three, top two? He has to move up. This is all hypothetical. I think if he won two, like, back-to-back Super Bowls? Yes. I don't know. I mean, that would, give him, that would give him three. Right. Yeah, I think he'd got. I think he'd be like right. I don't know. We can't. We forget about how great Awe was, though. I don't. Mm-hmm. And, and Aikman, like and Bradshaw. I don't know. It's tough, but like he's yeah. just, he's just incredible. And I, I don't know. That would really make the conversation about Brady, Montana, and then like who number three is. It would be right. really, really tough. Super interesting. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us this week on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys are staying safe. And riding this all out together, like I said earlier, not sure what's happening next week, what the plan is, but if we are not back on, we will still do another podcast, same remote style, um, have fun, cut that, um, hope you're finding ways to spend time with your family, uh, and your friends and stay busy during this time. Remember, stay safe. Uh, and we will make sure you follow us on all of our social media pages at maybe I'm crazy pod on our YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube page. You can listen to the podcast on the iHeartMedia app, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And we appreciate you. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next week. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Uh.